3rd of January 2023, Tuesday. All right, the very first trading day of the year and people, the viral is going on about whether the January effect is going to happen again. So some of us know what's the January effect, some may not know. So I'll cover this shortly. But again, I'm going to extend my greatest, uh, heartiest uh, wishes to all of you. It's a brand new year, so let's just make good money from the market. But do make sure that you do your risk assessment and also make sure that you do your uh, calculation of your targets and profit for the year so that you can have a solid resounding year. All right. Thank you, Ames, for the kind sponsorship. Now, let's just talk about the last trading day of 2022. The Dow Jones was down by 73 points. The Nasdaq down by 11 and S&P down by about 9 points. Um, basically, it was a very flat day. We can see Microsoft, Google, Apple hardly move. All right. Tesla, not too bad, up by over 1%. But if you look throughout the whole day itself, the market was down more than that. Then a strong recovery towards the end probably gives a very good insight that what we happened this morning, which we saw the Dow just going higher before pulling back and now recovering very strongly. So today is a very volatile day. I'll share with you shortly. Now, first of all, oops, there's some technical issue right here. Just give me a moment. Okay, there's some, okay, here we go. Apology on that. Still very fresh from the long weekend. Okay, let's go. All right, so what we have for the year itself, right, the Wall Street um, ended low and is seemingly the worst year since 2008. The S&P 500 finished down by nearly 20%. So let's take a look. It was pretty brutal to, to the Wall Street. And you can see that the Dow Jones was down by 8.8% by the end of the year. The S&P was down by 19.4, so very near to the bad territory. And of course, the Nasdaq is confirmed in the bad territory. is down by 33.1%. And um, fortunately for the first of uh, the last quarter, the Dow Jones managed to recover. But if you look at it from the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, it was down most of it, uh, not all of it. All right. So the thing is that at the moment now, people are all asking, would there be a follow through of the selling for 2023 or would there be a rebound right now? So this is a big, big billion dollar question. And I will share with you more in detail. But once again, let's look at some statistics. All right. So a bit of... Um, PowerPoint issue at the moment, don't worry. All right, so it was a terrible, no good, very bad year to this new age well from Bloomberg. You can see that basically the treasury is down by almost 12%, the IG caught by 15%, the large cap down by nearly 20%, small cap was worse down by 22%, Emerging company uh, market was down by 22%. The only thing that was pretty good was the US dollar was up by almost 8%. And of course, the broad in commodities are higher to about up by 14. Gold was down a bit. And of course, the real was the worst down by 25%. So if you look for this table, it seems like a bit good idea to buy some REITs if it sits down by 25%. But I beg to differ. I feel that REITs will go down further this year. In fact, <clears throat> one market that I'm going I'm paying a lot of attention is the gold market right now. I think that gold after the next pullback will be a very good time to buy into the market. And of course, the treasuries, which is the bond market, I feel that it can drop by another 15% or so, which I covered in the last MAO. And um, you can see at the moment now, the uh, current situation, the PE change, whether the EPS change, you can see for 2022, it was very, very low. 21 was fantastic. So all this tells me that we may see a lower EPS for 2023. And with the current situation right now in China, and it's seemingly a bit of spreading across the world, don't you feel that a lot of your friends recently have been coughing or they're not feeling very well? Well, it seems to be happening. So all this tells me that this could be a repertoire of what happened in 2020. So let's look at the S&P chart right now and a very important number that you need to take note for the spot market. And that is 38. 08 level well because 3809 in my perspective is a very important technical support which the market has basically supported itself five times over the last eight trading days and um this is going to be important because if anything you go higher and the first target will be 3869 so the closing was 3839 so we're not too far away 30 points that's too far it is possible to be reached by today if the market decide to do the January effect thingy. But of course, if the market breaks below 3808, then the next selling wave can bring it down to 3750 level, right? So I'm going to write down all this number for you so that you can use it for your own trading, okay? 3750. Now, the volume have been pretty thin the last few trading days. So this is a bit of uncomfortable, uh, but of course, again, it could be the end of the year. We need to see how it goes later today. 
Now, this is what I meant by the SME 500. Now, initially, last Friday, the market came gap down first. There was some selling, but very incredibly, when it hit the 3809 level, as I mentioned to you, it just stopped there and rebounded. And very interesting, even though it went down again later on in the night time, right? It stayed down for quite a while, maybe probably about an hour. And once towards the last one hour, look at it. Oh my God, it went all the way up again. And the volume obviously accompanied it. So probably the market really take this 3809 very, very, very seriously. So as long as the market stays above 3809, I don't think there'll be some selling, all right? At least for the next few days. This is the power of the January effect, all right? So this is the uh, ongoing right now that people are pretty concerned is the situation in US after what happened in China. So this is from CNBC, highly immune evasive Omicron XBB 1.5 variant is quickly becoming a dominant in US as it doubles weekly. All right. So in short itself, something is not doing nice and happening in US. So we're not too sure what's happening. So I'm going to bring into you a video. Uh, by, by this expert talk about this COVID variant XBB. Let's hear what she has to say. Here, um, more contagious, more uh, dangerous, less dangerous. And, and long term, what yes. does this look like? Yeah, the long term is that this virus isn't done with us and that if we continue to be complacent in 2023, that in the long term, this will come back to bite us. It may be sooner than 2023, but it could be as soon as 2023. In terms of what's happening and unfolding in China, Andrew, a way to think about this is that is a population that is naive. That is a, just an incredible, wonderful Petri dish for any virus. So the virus does not need to get fitter or smarter in order to perform well in a population like China's. So if anything, the United States is the kind of environment where you will likely see more of these immune evading variants develop, meaning, again, we have a domestic problem. We need to keep an eye on what's happening in China for implications across the world. But that just speaks to, I think, what you pointed out earlier, CDC, better wastewater surveillance and doing this on a global scale. We can't keep doing this in a patchwork piecemeal fashion. All right. So that's what you hear right now. So if you can remember what happened back then. Uh, in China, back in Wuhan time, then after that itself, it slowly went to US and things get a little bit dicey. And of course, we had a fright month in February, whereby the market just collapsed. All right. Now, I'm not saying that there'll be a repeat, but undeniable, this is something that we need to be very, very careful and hope that this immunity of us can actually save us. All right. So this is what's happening in China right now. You can see once again, I mean, I hate to show you this in the start of the year, but undeniable, the things are, this is really ongoing in China. And the scary part is that, look at it, this is the official number from China, and the number has zoomed down again, seemingly that everybody's okay. <laughs> okay, so in total now for China, in total since 2019 and then now, they have a 1.9 million cases of COVID, and unfortunately about 5,000 deaths. But of course, we all know that this number is definitely not correct or unless the videos or the photographs we've been receiving is actually being photoshopped because I think there's more than that. But again, we listen to the official, we see how it goes. But the thing is that right now, right, we got, there are people kind of basically getting me worried that it could relieve the 2020 disaster. And also the COVID-19 variant in China is also of detected in Malaysia. Gosh, okay, so that's why I am feeling a bit jittery right now because Malaysia and Singapore, we are all open to each other. So if this is spraying in Malaysia, then what do you think happened in China or Singapore then? All right, so of course, the Chinese stock got affected, definitely, right? Uh, on Friday, many, many Chinese stock got hit across the board. Of course, there was some other reason, like it's because of Futu, actually, uh, there are some rumors saying that because the Chinese government doesn't want them to be involved in some fun, uh, some fun arrangement. So that is one reason why the count stock down by almost 20 over percent. But across the board itself, we can understand that the Chinese stock would not be performing that well with the ongoing thing that's happening in China right now. And of course, more reports are saying that, that they are probably uh, developer shirts are being hit because they're worried on what's going on. And if people are not going to buy the properties or they can't pay or facilitate it, then definitely the banks, the properties, the insurance, all this will be affected, right? So, of course, uh, some people say that maybe 2023 will be better because after a $3.9 trillion route, maybe things can be better. Well, it's always a both side of the coin. You make your own decision, yep. 
Okay, so let's talk about the generic effect right now. This generic effect, what is this all about? Okay, it's a perceived seasonal increase in stock prices during the month of January. Okay, so generally speaking, usually this January month, the stock market will be up. Now, it's because we have a December usually based on the tax loss harvesting after they realize the capital gain. So that means that they sell their losses in the December month. And once they sold off, it's being used for taxing for tax deduction and then of course some of the counters are pretty good they will use it to buy back again so that's why generally usually in january the market will be up okay that's what i'm trying to say here so in the bigger picture since 1938 29 of the 30 years gain seems uh seen in january february so that means that usually january is a good month yeah and um because of that right okay a lot of people feel that this is going to be a good time to invest and buy more and uh previously they was just saying that if the first five days of january is positive usually the whole year is going to be positive so there are many many uh such thing and just you have to believe it because last year itself january i remember the market was up for one single day or two days then after the market came down so if you look at the january effect if the first few days of the market is down then it will be it will spread throughout the entire year which we saw it last year so today let's see what will happen but of course the aaii sentiment all right which is the um telling you guys right now right it seems that it's a good time to buy because every time when the indicator right basically come down to the bearish period whereby it's about 40 to 45 then usually the stock market will bottom out mm, okay so you can see that it happened before in 1990 19, uh, 2002, 2009, and now it's happening again for 2022. So if you don't ask me, right, the last time we see something similar was this. Hence, therefore, there could be a possibility that the stock market should go up. So with the selling uh, happening in the entire 2022, so people are now getting pretty bullish. They, they feel that there could be a chance the market will be going up. So uh, just to remind you that this is all statistics and you just have to make your own final decision. Yeah. So what are the big boys say? Well, Vanguard, okay, Vanguard, the analyst says that they are also very pessimistic of the US economy and they see a 90% chance of a recession. Okay, this is from Vanguard, one of the top ETF in the world. All right, but of course, uh, we have people like on the other side, um, this JP Morgan, they says that nope, near-term recession is too close to call even though there's a quite a possibility of a recession it could be a mild one even if it occurs all right so end of the day is that for them they feel that the market is yeah it may go down a bit more but the downside will be limited so you can see different camps have different views so you have to make your own personal call on this now i'll be honest with you right i'm still pretty bearish the market but still end of the day i have to Make sure that I share you the both sides and then you make your own final decision. Yep. So that is the front part of the MAO video. The do take note itself, you notice that today there is no uh, special code because I have said this last week that there's no more special code be given. You just need to basically leave a comment about what you hear today. Leave a comment that's more like two liners and we will pick up the winners. Meaning that if let's say you write pretty well, we will show that we we'll showcase a name tomorrow during the MAO. All right. So if your name is being highlighted, you get a chance to be going for the draw, right? The spin the wheel lunch with Kel Tingy. All right. So you need to leave a comment of today's video. Okay. All right. Whether it's good or bad, we'll both accept it. Of course, try to leave the good one. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at the charts right now for today. Now it is incredible. Everybody, let's take a look. This is my KFC, my Cal flip chart cycle. Oh my goodness. Look at this guys. The KFC level is at 33,031. And today's low is 33,038. Oh my God, it missed by seven points and rebounded. So once again, it's proven that my KFC level is pretty, pretty incredible. So as long as the Dow Jones stays above 33,031, there's no way the Dow is going to go down. Okay, simple as that. Now, if the Dow is going to go up instead, it may challenge the 34,000 level. All right, this morning we call for sell. Unfortunately, it hit a stop loss. It's okay. We'll try to get later. All right. If you look at it on the um oops sorry look at the on the nasdaq you can see that the nasdaq kfc is over here and that is at eleven thousand seven seven four. and when the market lost it it came back down hit my support beautifully and today a brilliant recovery so this is like a dragonfly doji so usually it means that the market can do a reversal so most traders are betting that this is a reversal this is a bottom 
the market should be going up. But again, I felt that it's a bit too early to call. I just got this nagging feeling that something is not correct. I'll tell you more in detail later on. Yep. And of course, we have the Hang Seng. The Hang Seng has just broke above my my KFC level. My KFC level is um, this 20,000. Sorry, again, let's confirm this. 20,103. And of course, today it broke above it. Now, the last few times, it touches that and pull back. But today, it broke it very convincingly so let's see by the end of the day does it stay below or stay on top all right and of course for gold wow look at it today gold today have blast pass the kfc level back here itself was at 1726 and of course the gold pulls back brilliantly here on this day in november and then that was where it started to recover and go all the way up now my target was 38 uh, 1838 which today the goal has reached all right congratulations for those who went long in gold this is a good time to take some profit, all right? You really need to consider doing that. Okay, let's just talk about the general market for today using my, care, my TWB indicator. Okay, so first of all, okay, there's something here, okay. First of all, let's take a look. The Dow Jones today has touched and broke above my BNBRL level. My BNBRL level is at 33,481, which is where we are right now. So as long as the Dow Jones stays above the 33,481, it can go towards this point, and that is 34,056. Do note, today is a classic trading day, 33,174 is the pivot one. So by staying above OP and above pivot one, is a general buy, all right? So watch out for this. But my KSI, not good. My KRW, not good. So it actually tells me that although the market has gone up, but the selling pressure is actually everywhere. So that is where I am getting a bit concerned right now. I just probably you know long small and see how it goes from there. But if you ask me, as long as the indicator is on the red side, I will usually go slow for time being. Now for the NASDAQ, it's a different story. The NASDAQ itself, right, you can see the BNB support level is at 10,800 and the market on Friday touches it and rebound pretty strong and now it's going to challenge the BNB RL level and that number will be at this 11,089 and if the market break this, we can see 11,277, okay? KSI is green, KRW is red, so which means we have a mix back here, so probably the market may need some time to move higher. S&P 500, very nice Dragonfly Ryoji, as you can see right now. KSI is green, so the buying interest came in. So all we need to do now is to watch the BNB RL level here, and that's about uh, 38.92 level. So we're 10 points away. If the market breaks here, we can see 39.18. Okay, now of course today is an inverse pivot. Usually inverse pivot, the upside after pivot 2 may not be that strong. So we the watch this. If the market pulls back, 38.44 should be the first support for now okay all right let's look at the nikkei the nikkei today went down first okay because of the yen but then again the u.s recovery brought it up back up again and now we are very near to the support level and that's twenty five thousand nine hundred fifty two. so we are just near to it let's see what happened next ksi and krw both are not really giving the support hence therefore selling pressure initially was there now how about the hang seng right now let's take a look hang seng the Hang Seng is really strong, as I mentioned to you, the KSI, the KRW, both of them on the positive side. And once it broke above the BNB RL, you can see that it goes up higher. Now it's trading at 20,196. Okay. Now today's pivot one is 20,156. So we should see a bit of further upside if the market maintained above it. It's a classic trade. Uh, if you ask me, maybe if the Dow continue to go higher, the Hang Seng can test 20,300. This is something that is really possible. Now, unless it goes below 20,156, if not traders, you need to follow through, yeah, on this. DEX have just opened. Let's take a look at DEX. Oh my goodness, look at DEX. Oh gosh. DEX open, stays above the MLP, 13,972, and the single movement, oh my God, from 14,000, it went all the way up itself to 14,272. It means about 300 points. That's a lot. So the the, the tick profit will be 14,296. I think this will be able to tap and then we should take some profit. KSI and KRW are both mixed signals, so we will not know what to do. But at least for the price action now, breaking the BMB RL and also the BM, uh, the pivot one should bring it higher. So 14,296 should be there. 
oil market let's take a look now oil has continued to rise and i told you guys the bnb support level which is at um 76.84 is so strong look at it the first time when it broke it was here it pulls back stops here and go higher next one pull back again stops here again and now pull higher so which means that there's a very good chance that the crude oil can test the uh, bnb rl level and that's about 82.79 i've been saying this for a while because it basically got itself supported at the bnb extension and now it's seemingly mounting to that ksi is positive only though the uh, KRW is not that positive, but at least they are on the same side for now. Okay, so that will be the market, but let's look at some currency, a quick one on dollar yen. Dollar yen today came down all the way to 129.69, means it broke below the 130 mark. Then after that now, it's back up again to 130. Now, of course, the dollar, let's take a look at the dollar for today. This is going to be interesting. Now, the dollar today has went up quite a fair bit. In fact, dollar up by 1% today, 100 over pips. Um, what's the reason? I couldn't find any reason to the dollar, but still, to me, it's a technical thing. As long as the market stays up, then of course, 104, sorry, 104, um, 104.70 should be able to be touched. And of course, just now the high was 104.75, so it was given. So again, our technical is pretty good, right? So if the dollar continue to go higher to 105.70, then maybe there could be some reason for that. And of course, if you look at the 10 year yield right now, which are kind of very positive, right? Uh, well, it didn't really behave and it should be interesting. So the 10 year yield actually came down instead, down by as much as, uh, is that 2%? Yep, indeed. It's down by 2%. Hmm, quite interesting though. So what's the reason? I'm not too sure, but still it could be because of people, uh, you know, probably, um taking some profit from on the dollar shorts and then now they move to the yield uh, the, the tender bonds market not too sure so of course when the yield comes down the bond market goes up so again a bit different from what i feel so that's why i say i'd rather just take a look for today yep so that is the dollar let's look at the pound the pound is down quite a fair bit with the dollar strengthening the pounds got slammed down and you can see that this is a higher low formation and i mentioned to you guys as long as the moving higher low formation and the ksi is red anytime the market can really sell and of course it really really happened all right so guys take note of this and of course in the krw and here side the same direction you can see that the market really really acts on that and last but not least is euro and euro today has also came off quite a fair bit um, it's broke below the BNB support level right here. I can just change the color a bit. The BNB support level, and that is uh, 1.06. Now it's trading at 1.055. So most likely 1.5020 will be the next target. And I think that it will be done. Okay. All right. So that is the currency market. Let's look at the commodity market first. Now for the commodity market, let's take a look. Okay. I just can change the charts. For the gold market, let's take a look right now. As I mentioned to you, it's moving up itself and it broke above the pivot one at 1831. So most likely, there's a high possibility to see 1854, which is the uh, upside of this uh, market. Now, the high of today is 1850, so you're not really far away. Eh? So traders, if you want to hold on, you can continue. If not, it's all right. Maybe at 1854, take some partial profits, right? Now, silver is the best of the best. Now, it's $24, and I told you guys, silver will go to $24.86, and it's really happening now. We are just about less than probably 40 cents away from the target, all right? So, silver has been very, very supportive, and almost every time when silver calls for buy, you can see that the upside is really there. So, I'm not half, I'm not half surprised that you see $24.86 later uh, this week, all right? KSI and KW are very positive, so that means that the we need to um, see more upside uh, if they don't follow through. Okay, so we have the Ethereum. We, uh, sorry, we have the gold and silver. Let's look at the Ethereum. Okay, let's take a look. Now, Bitcoin is staying very stable at the BNB support level at 16593. KSI is green, no more blue bars. So that means that the positiveness is there. But interestingly, the dollar result is up. Hmm, okay, so that's how I'll thank you my concern right now. You can see that the dollar is up today. 
Today, today the yield is down. Okay, fair enough. But the thing is that the gold price is up, the commodities price are up. Mm, okay, it doesn't make sense because usually when you have the ten year up, the remaining two will come off. So that means that there are going to be them shuffling of funds along the way, or people are getting me worried, or maybe maybe something they know we don't know. So that's why traders you need to be very very careful. And I'll tell you more in detail tomorrow after I do my little research on this. Now Ethereum has found support again. The one two the one two zero zero support is over here for a couple of days. The market just couldn't go above it, and on Thursday on Friday it went above it. That's why. The thing is this, it shows that Ethereum has the chance to really go higher. It's not Friday, by the way, this is actually yesterday's. Yeah. So that means that the BNB RL level, which is at 1, 2, 33, most likely it will be 3 to 9. Okay, if I say the continuation of the market coming in, both KSI and KCX are all very positive. So this upside is possible. If not this week, I mean, not today, it'll be within this week, my personal view. Yeah. Alright guys, so that will be all for today, MAO itself. So please make sure that you go through the video and see what you want to say to me in words and write it down. Make sure it's more than two sentences and I'll be more than happy to put you into the lucky draw box. Alright, this is Kel signing off. Have a great day. Bye-bye.